All right, guys, let's proceed. New user was created and now I could try to connect to this uh, Docker container remotely via SSH. And I'll do that simply in the new tab from my macOS computer. Here I am located in the shell for my computer. I am not inside of the any container. That's why here I'll use SSH command. If you're using Windows, you could also SSH using, for example, PowerShell. SSH is available on Windows out of the box as well. All right, SSH. Next, let's use option dash P that will tell SSH that I want to connect to custom port. Recap that I have published internal port for this Docker container, that is 22 for SSH, as port 2222 at this computer local host. That's actually the way how Docker publishes internal ports from containers. And that's why here I need to specify this custom port 2222, like so. Next, I'll specify username that I will use for connection to remote server. It is Bogdan in my case. Next, after add sign, you need to specify host name of the server you want to connect to. In this case, we are running a Docker container. That's why host name will be simply localhost. I have explained you before what localhost means. It resolves actually to loopback IP address of the computer, that is 127.0.0.1. And with such command, I will connect via Docker to container that is running this Ubuntu image, this one. And actually Docker will perform redirection of the traffic from this port at my computer localhost to internal port 22 inside of this container. Sounds a bit complicated, but that's how it works. All right, let's try this. Press Enter. I see prompt authenticity of host localhost 2222 can't be established. And here you see ECDCA key fingerprint. Here is its SHA hash. And actually it is hash of the RSA key pair that was generated here when we have installed OpenSSH server in this Ubuntu container. All right, here you need to choose either you want to proceed and store this fingerprint or not, whether you trust this fingerprint or not. Let's suppose that I want to connect. Yes. Permanently added key to the list of known hosts is a good sign. And here I need to enter password for Bogdan user. And I have set password 123, enter, and now I am in. That's how I was able to connect via SSH to Ubuntu server that is running inside of the Docker. And here you see regular prompt and you see that I'm actually inside of the home directory for Bogdan user. Here you see this tilde sign. You already know all of this. That's how we were able to connect remotely via SSH. In the same way you could connect remotely via SSH to any server in the world. But usually SSH is using default port 22 and you don't need to use here this additional option as I did because I am running Ubuntu inside of the Docker. That's why usually you need to specify SSH command, next space, then username and after add sign comes host name of the server you want to connect to remotely from your local computer. That's how it works. And if you have any virtual private server available for testing, you could verify that directly right now and try to connect from your local computer to remote server using SSH. And actually, as additional challenge for you, you could set up any virtual private server on any of the hosting services, either free or paid, and try to perform the same action as I did, connect via SSH, but to your remote server. That's challenge for you. All right, that's all for this lecture and actually that's all what I wanted to tell you here about SSH protocol. Again, this secure way of communication and getting access to remote shell via SSH protocol. Great. Actually, let me show you one more thing and let me try to connect to the same server as root user. Let me clear terminal and here I'll use same command and instead of Bogdan, I'll type root like so. And here I am prompted to enter root password. But actually, in this case, when we have created this new container, we have not set any password for root user. 
And that's why if you want to try to connect remotely as a root user, you need first set up a password for root user. Let's do that. Pass WD. And here enter new password. Let's say again 123, 123. Password updated successfully. And now let's try to enter this password that I have just configured here. And I see permission denied. Please try again. And that's what I have told you before. You are not able to connect as root user remotely by default. And if you want to do so, you need to adjust configuration file of SSHD server. Let me show you how to do that. Let's go back here, clear terminal, and now let's edit SSHD configuration file. For that, I'll use my favorite editor Nano, and it seems that I'll need to install it using apt-get because now it is not available. Let's do that quickly, apt-get install Nano. The reason why I'm asked to install Nano because now I'm using brand new container with clean setup. And we have installed Nano in one of the previous containers. All right, Nano was installed. Let's use it, Nano, etc, ssh, and here will be ssh, let's use tab, sshd underscore config, this file. Let's auto complete name. And here in this file, you need to search for a line that will allow login for root user. Let me scroll a bit down. Here is this line, permit root login. Please remove this hash sign, uncomment this line, and instead of prohibit password, type yes. Please remove this part and type yes like this. Let's now save the file, yes, enter, and now we need to restart SSH service. Let's do that. Let's clear terminal and enter service SSH restart, like this. Restarting OpenBSD secure shell server. Let's verify whether it is running, service SSH status. Yes, it is running. And now let's try to connect once again as root user. Let's go back here, let's terminate this session and open up new one, ssh-p2222, it is external port that is mapped to internal port 22 of the container, and here I specify root as username. Let's press enter, password 123, and now I'm in. That's how you could connect as root user remotely via SSH and perform any actions you want. And now you see that uh, I'm inside of the home directory for root user. You see tilde sign here and slash root directory here. All right, that's all what I wanted to tell you here about SSH. And next, let me show you two additional utilities called CURL and WGET. With those utilities, you are able to get uh, and download some resources from internet. Let's try that next. Bye-bye.